Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Rapashi's fish food. If you've never seen Rapashi before, here's a couple of examples that I use personally, but they make a pretty huge selection for different types of fish. It's really high quality stuff, very nutritious, but there's a catch. Rapashi doesn't come ready to feed right out of the bottle. Actually, it comes first as a powder that we can then mix with boiling water and turn into something a little bit like jello. Feeding a food in a gel form has a couple of advantages. First, it's already full of water, so it's easy for the fish to digest. And second, it allows Rapashi to include a very long list of high quality, very nutritious food ingredients that might otherwise make a huge mess in the aquarium. What I want to focus on in this video is how to prepare Rapashi in a way that it doesn't just fall apart when you put it in water, and then also how to make it in a large batch that you can then store long term so that you don't have to go through the trouble of cooking a new batch every day or every week. So let's just start by following the directions on the bottle and see where that gets us. First we mix one part Rapashi powder with two to three parts boiling water. Now there's two very important things you want to be aware of at this stage. If you're having trouble with your Rapashi kind of falling apart, disintegrating when you put it in water, you might want to go a little heavier on the powder to water ratio, so maybe you're just doing one part Rapashi to two parts water. And also, you want to make sure that the water is actually boiling when you mix in the powder. It doesn't matter whether you do it on the stove or the microwave, but you want the water to be at or near a rolling boil before you add the powder, and then you want to stir a little bit. Next, you take the mixture and pour it into some kind of a mold and just let it cool down and turn into a gel. I put mine in the fridge usually and within probably a half hour, it's pretty firm. I think at this stage, what most people do is just store the gel in the fridge and then when they want to feed, dig out a little chunk with a spoon, drop it in the aquarium. It sinks right away and it works great. The limiting factor here is shelf life. Now Rapashi says that their food is good for a couple of weeks in the refrigerator. I personally think it's a little longer than that, but if you don't want to push any boundaries, two weeks is probably a good estimate. There are a couple of ways that you can increase the shelf life of your Rapashi, and one of them is listed in the directions on the bottle. And that is to take the gel, cut it into thin strips, put it on a baking pan, and cook it in the oven or a dehydrator for about 8 to 12 hours at 150 degrees. And this turns it into a little piece of jerky. Now, I've never personally opted to do this, but I did just so we could talk about it. I could show you how that turns out. And this is what you get. They're pretty thoroughly dehydrated, so I'm not worried about shelf life, but I was concerned about how well they would feed, so here's what happens when you drop it in water. Looks like it sinks almost immediately, but what I noticed was that it took about an hour to two hours for it to soak up enough water to be soft enough for anything to eat, so I'm not sure I really like that. The other option for extending shelf life is just to freeze the food. And that's pretty self-explanatory. You just put it in the freezer and it'll last for about six months. But what I like to do is while my mixture is still warm and still liquid, I'll portion it out into an ice cube tray. And you can get anything from a mini ice cube tray to something full size, depending on how big of a chunk you want, and just pour it in there and then put that in the freezer. And when it comes time to feed, you get nice little cubes that pop out perfectly portioned and ready to go. Now, if you leave the food uncovered in an ice cube tray in your freezer, it will pretty quickly freeze dry on the outside, which means it'll float instead of sink immediately. And that might actually be a good thing if you have a fish that likes to pick off food from the top of the water. You can just let the cube float there. Little pieces will fall off as it rehydrates and then they'll eat it. But if you want it to sink right away, all you need to do is make sure that it's sealed in some kind of a container, maybe a Ziploc bag. And then it should take a lot longer to freeze dry. For the first two or three weeks, you can take it out of the freezer, put it in water, and it might float for a moment, but then will quickly sink. So there's just a couple of quick tips to maybe up your Rapashi game, and if you've never tried it yourself, I highly recommend it. Good luck, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.